world-renowned explorer Henry Worsley has died from dehydration as well as exhaustion as he tried to cross the Antarctic all by himself. Uh, Sasha, extremely sad here. Uh, Mr. Worsley was rescued on Saturday. Uh, he did make a distress call. He was uh, 71 days into his expedition. He was actually pretty close. It was just about 30 miles or so uh, away from his destination. Um, and that's when he made his distress call. He was taken to a hospital in Chile where he did later die. Um, he, he began his journey. It was a 1,100 mile journey all by himself uh, back in November. He was pulling just a sled with his food and his supplies, his tents and all that. He was on skis. He was going. Um, the plan was to be, you know, the first person across the content, uh, across the continent uh, unassisted in any ways um, and just with a sled and skis. Other people have done it before, but they were pulled by kites. Uh, they had airdrops from supplies, from helicopters, things like that. He wanted to be the first one to do it, and it's so sad to see this man go. He was world-renowned, very well-respected man, ex-military. He was a lieutenant. Um, so a lot of celebrities as well as people like Bear Grylls, who are also in the military, have come out and kind of given their condolences. People like David Beckham, Bear Grylls, um, the Duke of Cambridge, for example. So very sad to see someone like this go. Well, Worsley was very well respected, and he was following in the footsteps of Sir Ernest Shackleton, who set out to do the same thing in 1914, um, but he was trapped in ice for 10 months before his boat eventually sank. So, you know, this is a huge feat um, that, you know, many, many people have tried, and it seems, you know, to date, although this is very sad, that no one's been able to do it successfully. Ernest Shackleton, that guy was a real, real legend, and, you know, especially for people like this guy who was, who was an explorer himself, but, you know, when, when Ernest Shackleton's boat actually got stuck on the ice where it was for 10 months, no one died there. Uh, they were actually rescued safely, and, you know, this man, it's sad because, you know, he was in contact, he had his radios, he had his signals, he had everything. His body just couldn't take it, and I think he underestimated the the toll that it would have taken on his body. I mean, he was a little bit older. Uh, the amount of rest, you know, that he was taking simply just wasn't enough, and it's, it's just really sad to see him go. Um, he was asked before he was uh, leaving uh, if he was crazy. You know, people were asking him, are you out of your mind for trying to do something like this? And he said, what will drive me? Uh, on is raising money for these wounded soldiers. So he was doing this with a mission. He definitely raised the money. So in some ways or another, uh, he did actually succeed uh, as far as his legacy goes. But unfortunately, um, Mr. Worsley did pass away. A self-proclaimed Viking has confirmed he's heading to Antarctica from New Zealand a year after his last attempt ended with the deaths of his three companions. Jarl Andhoy reportedly wants to find the remains of the men and the yacht Berserk. But his journey is illegal and New Zealand authorities are now trying to find him. Mandy Gillies reports. <laughs> It was supposed to be the adventure of a lifetime, emulating Norwegian explorer Roel Amundsen's trek to the South Pole. Robert Skinnis, Tom Baleka, and Leonard Banks are declared dead, victims of Mother Nature's fury. 
They were in the yacht Berserk, waiting for Yala and Hoy and a friend to cross the ice shelf on quad bikes when a storm hit and sank the yacht. Now and Hoy's on a mission to find the remains of the men and the yacht. It's absolutely diabolical. I mean, he's going back there again in the same conditions as what was last time. I think he's on a suicide mission, to be honest. <laughs> Charlene Banks is the twin sister of victim Leonard Banks. She says it's all about publicity. He's definitely not well prepared at all. I mean, he leaves everything for the last minute. Um, he hasn't got any of the authorities go ahead on any of this. So he believes that he's above the law. And Hoy doesn't have the right permits for the trip, and New Zealand authorities are now searching for the 16-metre steel yacht Nilea. They say it's possible he's changed its name to either Berserk or Berserk 4. Aucklander Nick Atkinson sailed with And Hoy in the 90s and remembers him jumping off his yacht onto an iceberg wearing plastic Viking horns. But he concedes And Hoy is a brilliant yachtsman. From what I've seen of the new boat, it looks sound, um, perhaps not ideal, but Yal is very resourceful and he's always done a lot with very little, uh, so I wouldn't call it a suicide mission. Everyone said, you can't do that, it's crazy. And we did it anyway, as for his state of mind, that's still being debated. Amanda Gillies, 3 News. One day, I saw a boat. I had no sailing experience, but I saw this wreck of a boat, which, like, which was like a symbol for my dreams, really, because it was lying there and it was my way out of it. They thought my words were just empty. They thought I was just talking about a dream which would never happen. But when you go berserk, you put all in it, you know? There's no way back. The whole thing started with going to the south, to the warm, to the fun, to the sun. So Gambia, Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, and then Brazil, Argentina, Terra del Fuego, Patagonia, Cape Horn. Everyone said, you can't do that, it's crazy. And I thought, they think it's crazy to sail out, but I think it's crazy to be here. I touched it! I touched it! You saw it!
David is accepted by the animals, I am not. So he's the king of the animals, you know? That's all there is to it. <laughs> 65 hours after the yacht's emergency beacon was activated, the Sea Shepherds have located a life raft that seems to match the description of the one they're searching for. Is there any evidence anybody's touched anything in there or tied up anything? No. Nah, I can't see it. OK. The life raft is designed to deploy automatically if the ship sinks. So the fact that there were, there were no bodies in the life raft and no clear evidence that it was inhabited by a crew means that the, the, the most likely scenario is, is that the berserk couldn't handle the seas that it was in. One of the crew set off their emergency beacon and it sank with them on board. If you come down here, these are the risks you have to take. These are dangerous waters and dangerous conditions and, uh, and these things can happen. With the discovery of the empty raft, the rescue authorities Call off the search. Robart Scannis, Tom Baleka, and Leonard Banks are declared dead, victims of Mother Nature's fury. I will. 